The mean value theorem. Most calculus books will have a definition similar to this one. Let f of x be continuous on the closed interval a, b and differentiable on the open interval a, b. Then there exists at least one number c, maybe more than one, such that c will be between a and b and f prime of c will equal, we equal f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Or equivalently, you just do a little algebraic manipulation here, uh, this will happen. Of course, we get this formula just by multiplying both sides by b minus a, and I reverse the, the equal, uh, quality. But other than that, these are the same formula. Okay, the two things come up right away is one, um, why are we learning this and what does it mean? And uh, the first thing we'll do is uh, uh, we'll talk a little, uh, well, I'll mention why, why we're doing this. Uh, this theorem is very useful up the road for proving a lot of other theorems. And we're going to try to explain what this means and, and not prove it, but show why it's true. So here, that's what we're going to do. In showing why it's true, you're going to see what it means, okay? Uh, here's the situation. You have a function f of x uh, on the interval a and b, and notice it appears to be continuous on the closed interval a and b, and it's certainly uh, differentiable on the open interval a, b. So we've got the, we've got the um, conditions uh, for the mean value theorem set up here. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a secant line between the points uh, a and b, uh, x equals a and b, or the points a and f of a and b and f of b. Okay, So we're going to draw the secant line here. And uh, a secant line is just simply a line between any two points on a curve, and we're drawing it between the endpoints. Notice that uh, there are two points on the curve that seem to have the same slope as that secant line. In other words, here we have the secant line, but also look at C1 here. This roughly is the same slope. I, I didn't draw it perfectly, but the same slope as the secant line, and C2 seems to have the same slope as the secant line. And we're guaranteed that by the mean value theorem, by the way. And uh, now, the slope, we're going to look at the slope of the secant line, and, and an amazing thing will, will uh, come uh, turn up. Uh, a slope of any line, of course, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we go over here, and here's uh, y2. This f of b plays the role of y2, and f of a plays the role of y1, and f of b minus f of a, and this is the, uh, plays b here plays the role of x1, 2, excuse me, x2, and uh, a plays the role of x1, and so it's b minus a. So this represents the slope of the secant line. And notice also that um, uh, C1 has there's the same has the, the curve f of x has the same slope as the secant line, and we know that the derivative is the slope of the curve at any point. So function prime at C1 is the slope of this red line, which is also the slope of the secant line. So they're equal, okay? And I could do the same thing with C2. So notice this is the um, a result of the mean value theorem. This is what the mean value theorem states, okay? And so we've shown that why it's true, at least intuitively. And I would encourage you to, uh, you know, put, uh, draw other curves, continuous curves uh, on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. Uh, and, and, and then find, draw secant lines and find the C1s visually. You can always find one. There'll always be one. In the next video, we'll do a little application of this, and uh, you'll see uh, some, uh, it in use a little bit. We'll find some C's, in other words.